Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Uh, so Caleb has been working his tail off out here on our three new sheds. Um, you saw us putting some of them up. Uh, the reason we're doing all this is so that we can expand as much as we can whew, our rodent tree. We're going to be uh, getting a couple bigger species, which is why we have some rabbits. Um, we have that wild-caught uh, ball python rescue that was only eating gerbils, which is why we have <laughs> gerbils, um, which are a pain, by the way. Uh, and we're going to add quail for some other species that we want to get into. So we needed more room, uh, and it's really expensive to buy frozen uh, prey items. So we are building all these. So we're just going to walk you through real quick uh, what each of these sheds is going to hold. So I'm going to let Caleb do most of that because he's the one who's been working out here. This is shed one over here. This is shed two. That's shed three. Uh, what's going to be end up in shed one? We're probably going to keep the rabbits in shed one. Uh, kind of keep it by itself. They don't need near as much heat throughout the winter. So two and three are going to be uh, connected with an insulated tunnel between the two windows so that we can only have one heat source for both of them just to be a little more okay efficient. are the rabbits gonna stay free range the whole time yes okay they seem to they seem to like that they do okay they, they're a lot happier when they're free range okay they, they have a lot of they have cages in there to go into if they want but they're always open so. okay and then in here right now we have mice on an ARS rack and gerbils what's gonna is it gonna stay this way uh, the the gerbil rack is going to be moved into shed three. Okay. And we are going to also do quail in that shed. And we're going to build another mouse rack uh, to fill the extra space that frees up in this shed. So okay, but it still will fit these ARS bins, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. And what shed will the insects go in? The insects will also go in shed three because they can kind of go on top of everything else in their own bins. Gotcha. Okay, so only mice in here then? Yes. That'll be nice. Be and nice. some storage and stuff, but... Yeah. Okay. So, how uh, productive are these mice? Well, ours are a lot more productive than what you'll see is the average for mice if you were to look it up on Google or something, but... These are our, these top three, other than a few pairs of gerbils up here, are all dedicated to uh, grow outs of adolescents that we're just basically fattening up right now. Okay. By the way guys, I believe today is a, is a clean out day. This is as dirty as you will ever see these bins, and they're really not bad. Yeah, uh, I clean them out about every three or four days so that they stay really healthy. So they get they get a full um, detox, new bedding. Um, he uh, bleaches out the bins at, like twice a week, so they stay extremely clean. Uh, we use a lot of bedding. I know some people don't do that, but they just seem to like to burrow, and it keeps them a little cleaner when they have that much bedding. Oh, there's a mama about ready. Two mamas about ready to pop. And uh, walk us through the uh, the process. Do you ever have a female by herself? We do. Um, after the females are noticeably pregnant, I will take the males out. And just because that way, if the males stay in, uh, right after the females give birth, they will immediately get impregnated again. And it's just a little worse for them. We give them a couple weeks of a break between so that they... Gotcha. But the two females in the trio stay together. They do. So they raise their babies together. They raise their babies together. Okay. And uh, for about three and a half to four weeks, and then the babies are already old enough to be eating adult block and move out to a grow-out bin on their own. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's that much is pretty standard. What would you say our average litter size is? Um, definitely higher than <laughs> what the normal, Google says. A normal <laughs> average, I would say, probably eleven or twelve. Wow. We pretty often have big litters of up to 
16 to 18. Oh my goodness. That's so. like rat right there. Yeah. And you know, some people say never let them have that many babies because their growth rates are so bad. However, I'm in here every week getting out grow outs to feed off and these grow outs enter these grow out bins at four weeks old about, you said? Yeah. And they are plenty big. That looks like about as young as they get this, in this the grow bin, bins. I actually only pulled out a day or two ago. So okay. these are about as young as, as so these are about four weeks out. old guys and these are these are good sized mice. Uh, they're not as big as they get. Some of them get a lot bigger. Um, trying to find an older one. They're a little bigger. But they're nice and healthy. These guys are a little bigger. And he doesn't pack these bins too full. Um, it looks like between 10 and 15. Usually 15 bin. is about the top, the most that I try to do in a, in a okay. bit of grass. Um, any more than that is just a little too crowded. And gotcha. And I see that you separate your grow outs by gender too. Yeah, these, so, so these are all the male grow outs, yeah, these yeah. are the females. And yeah, we, we can't put the males together with the females for growing out, otherwise the females will get impregnated and the males will all fight. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, we don't want that. So they seem pretty happy and they're all eating Missouri, right? This... Yes. Yeah, Missouri 6F, I believe. I've put in orders before this stuff. So that's all they eat, really. Um, I have tinkered around with uh, feeding them some of our dubias and stuff. The um, insects that fly in Yeah, in <laughs> I've seen that. Um, but they're kept on just high grade uh, mouse and rat food at all yeah. times. And uh, what about diseases? Do you ever see diseases? Occasionally, just because we have so many on here. I mean, how many do you think we have on here? Oh man. At least 400 or so. Yeah. Between the whole rack and the grots and everything. So just because of the amount of mice we have on here, it's bound to come up sooner or later. Uh, but it's it's actually pretty rare that I'll come out here and, and have a mouse that's bad enough that it needs to be put down. Um, maybe once or twice a week at most, I'd gotcha. say. Gotcha. Yeah, guys, just so you know, um, I was in a wildlife conservation major in school and, they, and the kind of rule of thumb is in any population, captive or in the wild, you should expect about 4% of your population to have some sort of illness or disease at any given time. Sorry, I'll turn around, my life's bad. So the fact that, you know, one or two mice at any time here is sick is actually incredible. Um, really good uh, health in this colony, and we've been really happy with them. Anything else? Um, so these other <laughs> symbols, other than the, the obvious ones for male and females on the grow outs, are just kind of notes for ourselves so we know what's going on on the whole rack. If there's a star on it, it means there's a full breeding pair in there of two adult females and one adult male. Okay. And uh, right now we're completely full on the grow out bins. That's why there's, uh, even though the females are obviously pregnant in here, I haven't taken the male out yet. I uh, just got to free up a little bit of space here. Gotcha. And uh, these dates are th the dates of new litters of mice that they've had so that we know exactly what day they were born and when to pull them out into their own grow bins. Oh, look at this mouse. So guys, what I used to do the rodents and we only ever had white ones. Um, and then at the pet store one day they had some black ones, so I brought in some black ones. They didn't seem to do as well at first. But uh, we try and you know occasionally buy more just so that we don't get too inbred. But one, how did these orange tannish ones even happen? What what is that? I I almost think that it was breeding a gray and a black. A together. gray and a black. So I have no idea how this happened, guys. But I really like these tan ones. This is super cool. Yeah, I've never seen those at the pet store. They may have them in other places. But yeah, we certainly never I bought any like that. Really, it just yeah. popped up spontaneously. And I know these are just feeders, but I really like. Uh, messing with the colors of them. Yeah. They actually seem to have a little bit better success with the uh, rate of survival when you breed the different ones together yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's pop different next colors. door real quick and walk us through how it's going to be set up. Okay. And shed one here. So the first shed, we're just going to have the rabbits uh, and we're just going to hook up insulated duct work 
probably to the window during the winter, uh, just pulling a little bit of hot air from the boiler room. And okay. Because okay. they only need enough to stay above freezing and right. they'll be okay. Gotcha, gotcha, they gotcha. Handle it a little colder. Take a peek in there. Yeah. Hi, rabbits. Oh, they've moved all their hay around. Yes, they have. They do that all every time I put more down. I like our male. He's so cool looking. Or buck, I should say. Have you checked for babies recently? Uh, not in a couple of days. We're gonna have to do that soon because we've yeah. had them for we've how had long? Them for a little over a month. Has it even been a month? Maybe close to. It. Oh, Somewhere there's a that. wild mouse. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to do something about that. Uh, these these, these doors. doors. This is the only shed we didn't put on a platform, so the doors oh, don't line up perfectly. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Yep. Look. So these are sitting on these nice platforms. This one's just on the ground. I see what you're saying. Cool. But yeah, we'll deal with that. And uh, you don't think the wild mice would mess with the babies, do you? I don't think they would. I think they're just looking for okay. food. There were certainly wild mice in the other one. Oh, there were. <laughs> we, we have definitely cut back on the yeah. wild mice. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, so once you know we get into some boas and stuff, uh, this will help us a lot because we don't want to be feeding a boa constrictor mice. <laughs> you take a whole lot of mice. Oh, yeah. Cool. We really like these sheds, by the way. They assemble real quick. Um, not too expensive. We really like them. Sorry, guys. It's kind of a mess in here because we're still getting it all set up. But uh, got a compost pile here that we're just starting to fill up. A little bit of it's styrofoam. Eggshell, and... eggshell in there. Oh, it's eggshell. Okay, yeah. okay. I was like, is that styrofoam? What is that? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I can feel. I can feel some warmth off that already, and it's not even very full. So this is the tunnel he was talking about, right? Yeah, and so, I, I just started working on a kind of an insulated tunnel to go between them. Okay. Um, so where are you picturing the gerbils ending so, up? Yeah, after we get all this insulation put in, we'll probably have the gerbils on the same wall that they were in in, okay. in the shed too. So facing the shed, this right wall then. And then probably some quail along the back. With insects just above them? With with insects above okay, them. Okay, because the quail, we're told to either keep them with a ton of headspace or almost no headspace because they can fly. Um, so we'll probably do them in short runs with a long run along the whole wall. Um, and they say that each adult bird only needs one square foot of space. We're going to give them quite a bit more than that um, just because we can and we like to. And then the insects will also go above them. So this will be the warmest of the three sheds then? The heat source yeah. will end up over here? Yeah, it should be right around 80 most of the time in this shed. Okay, wow. Maybe high 70s. So guys, think about that. We're in Alaska. <laughs> yeah. We get cold snaps of negative 30 here, and uh, we're going to keep this shed at 80 at all times. So that's pretty awesome. The gerbils will like that. Uh, the insects, the quail will all be great with that. The mice don't need it that hot. Um, but they'll still be warm. They right? will. We'll have a fan inside, or just a high-powered fan in, in this uh, tunnel here. Okay. Just pulling all the warm air from this shed into the second shed. So that shed will stay a few degrees cooler. And then the rabbits will just have a bit of heat um, just to stay above freezing, basically, right? Yeah. In that last yeah. shed. It won't be connected be, to this. It'll be fine. Okay. I mean, the rabbits don't need any extra heat. We just don't want to come out and have to constantly be breaking the ice on their water. Right. <laughs> But no, the rabbits the rabbits like it colder rather than hotter, so I'm not too worried about them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to give everybody an update on how the rodent tree is going. So it looks like it's going to be awesome. Um, once we get all this put up, we'll move the gerbils over and start our quail and insects and everything. Right. All right, this, this is the man, guys, right here. He keeps all this running, so we feed our 100-plus animals yeah. off of this. We do buy some Most rats online. We're trying to move away from that. Uh, we're going to try and find a local source. It's just killer. Well, now that shipping we have this up. third shed, we have a little more yeah. room for extra racks, and we'll be able to really ramp up the mouse production. Yeah, so. yep. All right, and there you have it. And I'm sure at some point when we move to another city, we'll rearrange again so that we can fit some rats in. But yeah. for now, this is what we've got. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and comment down below. And uh, until next time, we are the Reptile Bar.